What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 22 of the Channel 8 podcast. I'm your host, Sean Go, and for today's episode, we're headed to the Far East as we welcome Jay Shuang, better known as Mr. Shanghai Soul himself. How's it going, Jay? Welcome to the show. What's up? What's up? Thanks for having me, Sean. Uh, I've been a big fan of you guys or of, of what you do on YouTube and Instagram for, for quite a while. I hit you up all the time, so um, I'm really happy to be on. And we were just saying before we started recording, um, this is actually the first time we've, I guess, face to face interacted before. So it's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm always uh, referring to your your uh, sneaker YouTube channel because we are actually like, oh, I would say almost the exact same like size foot. Yeah. So if I'm ever on the fence on a pair of shoes, I'm always <laughs> like, oh, I need to see what Sean says about the fit on these. I got to see what he says. <laughs> respect, man. Respect. So over in uh, Shanghai, like what's been on your feet the past week? Um, past week, it's it's been pretty hot in Shanghai. So um, I've been wearing a lot of my Element React 87s, the uh, the sale colorway. Um, those have been pre- pretty comfy, my go tos lately. Um, it's been so hot that like I know it's kind of corny, but I've been wearing my Nike SB Civilist Dunks. So it's like. They just like every time I step outside, actually, when they're sitting in my shoe room, like they're already changing color because wow. it's so freaking hot. And so um, I just wear that to kind of be like, like yeah, it's, it's hot outside, guys. Um, and then my my always go to is my um, Chicago's, my Jordan 1 Chicago's. That's like heavy rotation once a week at least. Yo, I got to ask though, it's super hot, but why are you wearing a hoodie? <laughs> Oh, I'm in I'm in a Starbucks right now, and and they blast the air conditioning, so it's like oh, okay, I had okay. to I had to I had to wear a hoodie inside because otherwise I'm gonna be freezing because it's like super super cold in the Starbucks. But once you go outside, I'll be sweating. Yo, that's the worst, man. Like super hot outside, and you come into a, a mall or something, and it's freezing cold. Yeah, that's right. Just, yeah, you, like I'm gonna get sick for real. So for myself, the past week, I broke out the FTC Nike SB Dunk Lows that just dropped. I wore the um, Adidas Ultra Boost ZX8000 Aqua colorway, the Ama Manier Air Jordan 3s, um, the Hunter Reese Forbes SB Dunk Lows today, and the Nike Zoom Fly 3, just like a normal electric green colored GR. So just, uh, that's been my week. How do you like those FTCs? Beautiful, yo. Like, it doesn't get as much hype as... um like a P-Rod or the Supreme Dunks. But honestly, the quality was amazing. Colorway was beautiful. Love it. Yeah, that's a. I really like that pair a lot. It's, I, I love the like Asian hits and like how the one side says it in blue, one side's yep. in red, just like when you enter like the female and male yeah, yeah. Uh, sauna rooms. That's awesome. So in terms of uh, pickups, have you picked up anything in the past week or two or just lately in general? Uh, yeah, I picked up some pairs. Uh, I'm, tr- I'm trying to be a little bit more selective. Um, but yeah, we all say I, that, I, I, did, <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did pick up a couple of pairs. Um, I did get the uh, Jordan 1 Electro Orange, I guess, like what some would say, the Shattered 4.0. Um, just, just to keep it, just to go with, the whole color scheme like i have all the other three so it's like i can't not get these even though they may not fall in line with the shattered line but yeah i picked those up um i picked up the dunk low orange pearl i know that it's like a predominantly women's shoe but um i'll talk about that later because i picked one up for my daughter so i was like i gotta get these to match um um i got I just posted on my stories right before I left the house. I just got the package uh, this uh, last night and it's the uh, Jordan one pollens. Uh, I haven't even like opened the box yet, but uh, I'm excited to like unbox those later. Um, and then I have, I have it confirmed, but I don't have it in hand yet is the uh, Jordan one patent breads. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So um, I mean, I don't know when I'll, I'll get that in, but, yeah, that, that's a that's a confirmed W, so that's nice. And other than that, that, that's it for now. And fingers crossed for the 29th for those Travis fragments. But uh, yeah, those, those are going to be pretty hard to get. Are those going to be um, 
like I don't know if you're are you a retail only kind of guy or do you pay resale too? No, I'll pay. Re- I mean, I pay resale up to like a reasonable amount. Like I, I've I have paid resale before, but I've never dropped like a thousand on a pair of shoes like i'll go like you know five six hundred seven hundred depending on what what needs to what needs to be done but uh uh, within reason i'm hoping those travises aren't like they're not like a two thousand dollar shoe but i don't know we'll see fingers crossed yeah it's hard to say (laughs) uh for myself so my week has been pretty light um so i got the air jordan one electro oranges just like yourself so the review for that should be posted either well, actually, when the time the podcast is posted, that video should be up already. I also got the FTC SB Dunk Lows I just talked about. I got the Reverse Papa Bear SB Dunk Lows or whatever you want to call it. And the um, undefeated Nike Dunk Lows, which I ordered a few weeks back, finally made it across the border. So glad to have that in the collection. What do you think about the Electro Orange? Um, I don't love them, but I think yeah. I'm probably going to get someone to paint that back panel orange mm. and then i think it'll be it'll be dope yeah to get it to like a like orange toe yeah exactly yeah so we'll see like i mean it's not bad it's better than some other jordan one colors that have dropped this year but it's not my favorite let's put it that way i think you know after after looking at it in hand i think i actually like them better than the 3.0 e- yes well the, the crinkle the crinkle if you take away it. the crinkle, if you take away the crinkle, then 3.0 is better. But with the crinkle, then for the 4.0 or whatever yeah. you want to call it is better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So now let's move on to my channel flipping segment, which is a rapid fire Q and A session where I give you two options and you pick the one that you're feeling the most. All right. Let's you ready. Go. All right. Yep. Number one, <laughs> more annoying, bratty students in school. Or people DMing you for hookups on Instagram? Oh, uh, I might have to say bratty students is more annoying because the the DMs and the hookups, like I'll get like probably like 10 or 15 requests every day. And I just, and I just delete all, honestly, I just delete all, like I just press, I just press delete all. Like I, I, I don't, I don't accept a lot of messages. uh, because actually, like I would say, eighty percent of them from like new people is always like, "Yo, can you send them? I'll pay extra. Like, please help me. I'm in so and so country, and it's easier for me to just be like, click the lead off." Yeah, um, right. bratty students, I I can't get away from. So I would <laughs> say bratty students are are more annoying. Question two: What's tougher, coaching a basketball team with zero subs, or dealing with your crying toddler? say the question again what's what's tougher yeah coaching a team like a basketball team with no subs or dealing with your crying toddler tougher is uh coaching a a basketball team with no subs that is definitely harder because (laughs) because for my daughter like i i know what i know what i can do to like get her to calm down a little bit yeah but on a basketball team like some of these guys are so out of shape i'm like man like i'm looking down my bench and i'm just like Oh no, I don't have any options right now. <laughs> or you just have a really good daughter. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's also true. All right. Question three: uh, Copying shoes in Asia or copying shoes in the U.S.? What do you mean, like fakes? No, like what's what's what do you enjoy better? Like what's easier, buying shoes in Asia or oh, buying copying? Shoes back? Co- yeah, oh, copying. okay, copying, copying. Um, ooh. Copying shoes in Asia, I think over the, and, and we can talk about this later, but over the past like three, four years, like buying shoes in Asia, is, there are more, maybe not more options, but I don't feel as stressed. Like it's weird. I don't know how to explain it. Like, yeah, copying shoes in Asia is better. 90s basketball or 2000s basketball? Ooh. Oh man. Uh gosh. Okay. I okay. I I mean we're 
I don't know if we're the same age. I'm I'm turning. I'm a little. I might be a little bit older. I'm 1983. I'm turning 38. Yeah, um, you're, you're a few years. I older. got. I gotta say, 2000s basketball because that's when I was like graduating high school, going into going into college. So like that's when it was like during college. It was just like when the playoffs start when you had like the quadruple header. It was just like order like four boxes of pizza. You just don't leave the house <laughs> yeah. all day. Like that's. That's the way to go, man. That was amazing. Yo, but the uh, NBA on NBC, though, that's classic. That intro. <laughs> yeah, that's classic. I mean, and, and I know we'll talk about it later because, like, what got me into sneakers um, was, like, uh, classic 90s basketball. But I think, like, at the peak of me following and watching and stuff, it was probably got to be 2000s. All right, cool. Um, in terms of basketball style, pounding the paint or making it rain from three? Oh, man, I'm a shooter. I'm a shooter. I'm uh, uh, so I gotta say, making it rain from three, man. Like, it's it's funny because I, I played all throughout high school, and um, I was always like the the corner the corner three point shooter. And then PJ Tucker right here, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more than zero points, more than zero points. Um, and then they would always be like, "Oh my god, all this guy does is shoot." And I'm like, "Oh, I'm so ahead of my time." Like every time I go back and I talk to my boys from high school, I'm like, "I was ahead of my time, man." Yo, you're a, tr- a true trailblazer right here, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. When I was like, like eight field goals, like eight of them were all from three. Like that, that was that's what that was my game. Um, next question: Jeremy Lin or Yao Ming? Oh man. I ha- this is hard because I had because like he's Jeremy's a guard right so like we all want to like we're all guards like none of us are like seven foot six centers and stuff but uh, if I gotta say like impact and career I think it's I think it's gotta be I think it's gotta be Yao even though I do have like friends that are that know Jeremy and stuff but I I just think with like cultural impact and like how it, it started I think it has to start with Yao I still remember when it was like. Wang Zizhi and like Mink Bater, Bater, Mink yeah. Bater, like yeah, like these guys, like they were even before Yao. I remember, um, like Wang Zizhi had like you know he was like a like a spread the floor like shooting five, like he had he had some range, man. He had some game. Yo, Bater, Bater, he played for the Raptors for like half a season. <laughs> I remember, and he was just like, I just remember him like clubbing people, like he clubbed just, Shaq. Like, that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember he like fouled the hell out of players yeah. <laughs> i remember that anyways um okay moving on union air jordans or travis got air jordans uh it's got to be the unions oh you mean like ones or are we talking like whole collection everything all all jordans oh, related to them that's tough because i just posted about it the other day i'm not a fan i'm not like the biggest fan of the union fours but then i feel like just the union ones just like trump trump all of travis's stuff so i guess i guess i'll have to say the union union jordans okay no wrong answer <laughs> yeah um air force one taipei or air max one clot solar red oh it's got to be the air force one taipei um I love that pair. That's the I only have two Air Force Ones in my whole collection. One is the Taipei and one is the Shanghai. Um and, and that's it. I got I'm done. I don't need any more Air Force Ones. Uh Air Jordan One Chicago OG or Air Jordan One Chicago off white? Okay. O OG. But I, I do feel like there's a lot of people lately, it's been like popular opinion that everyone is like hating on the off white Jordan ones. And I don't know why, because like I really think that was like a revolutionary shoe. Like I know that they're like maybe in today's style, it's like a little too crazy. But that that shoe when that came out, I was like, this is a piece like a work of art. I remember when I first got it in hand, I was like, this shoe is amazing. It's beautiful. But uh, yeah, to answer your question, I go with OG. I feel like part of the reason is because. Well, first of all, like the whole vintage trend is in and people are mm-hmm. gravitating towards like the original 1985 Chicago ones and stuff like that. Whereas Off-White one kind of represents like a previous era, like a few a few years back, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't know. Both of them are fire. And yeah, um, fire. 
Last question. Stupid question, but last one I have to ask. Shanghainese food, specifically, Shanghainese food or American food? Which one is better? This one's easy for me, and I go American food. Like, I am, like, at, at my core, I'm still, like, very American. So it's funny, like, when my wife is like, oh, what do you want to eat tonight? I'm like, pizza. She's like, are you <laughs> kidding me? Like, I'm like, give me pizza. I want Shake Shack. Like, um, let's go to Shake Shack. Let's go to Five Guys. Like, we'll hit up Cheesecake Factory. She's like, oh, my God. Like, there's something wrong with you. She's like, she's like getting, like, noodle food delivery. And I'm like, I'm going to order pizza. And she's like, again? Like, um, so Shanghainese food for people that don't know is actually really sweet. It's like on the sweet side of Chinese food. So that to me is like, it's, it's too, it's too like heavy, heavy on the sauce and on the sweet side. So I, I prefer if I were to choose American food. How did you first get exposed to sneaker culture and how did you most importantly end up in Shanghai? This goes back to uh, your previous questions when we were talking about like basketball and 90s basketball specifically. My first pair of shoes that, that I was just like in love with were the CB94s. Um, and I was in fifth grade at the time. And I remember my two, my two buddies, uh, we all had the same. They, they, they bought the shoes first. And I was like, oh my God, I need those. Like I need to have it like we're the trio. We're always playing basketball together. It was always our class versus another class elementary school. And they both had the black and purple pair. And I was like, I have to get them. I told my mom, I was like, I need these. I need these right now. I wore those things to the ground until like the air bubble in the back like popped. Um, so that was like the first pair. And ever since then, you know, 90s basketball, basketball shoes, kids, pennies, Iversons. Like I loved all of them. The first pair I bought with my allowance was the foam posits, the, the OG. Um, you know, like that, that's what really sparked it. And I didn't really get into like collecting shoes, like Jordan specifically, until I moved to Shanghai. Um, and that was back in 2011. Um, so I moved to Shanghai to become a teacher. Um, I was teaching in the States, I was in Maryland. Uh, taught there for four years and then I always knew I wanted to move overseas because I uh, I grew up overseas I grew up in Taipei um, and my buddy was like yo you should start you should like start collecting shoes that have more value than like random GRs but I was wearing them all. I was I was like playing basketball like three times a week um, I was just running them into the ground my buddy's like man you're collecting a lot of like random shoes you should you should probably get into something that's a little bit more like people will be like oh those are cool instead of just like random basketball shoes and that's when i started like looking into jordans and jordan ones specifically and that didn't even start until like 2014 2015 so it's fair to say like your life experience has been pretty evenly split between east and west yeah it's about half my life so like 18 years, 18, 17 years um, in, in the States and then the rest of it in Asia. So it's like really split down the middle. So the sneaker community has truly become more and more global. So I know when I first started buying shoes back in around 05, 06, like I was kind of in my own North American bubble where I'd be on message boards like Soul Collector and Nike Talk and we were kind of insulated from like the rest of the world, specifically the rest of Asia, like we didn't really have too much visibility into that. But with social media, IG, stuff like that, like I don't think physical distance is not really a thing anymore. And I see like your Instagram, for example, it's a really big linkage between connecting the East with the West. So how did you specifically build your platform to become like how large it is today? It was all random. Like I didn't start off my IG to be like, like oh, I'm going to be like, this sneaker guy or anything it was just really a way to just showcase my shoes um and to be honest with you it was a a way to kind of like 
catalog my my kicks so i was like yeah, oh okay i'm I just gonna you. take a uh, yeah like a picture every day and i think my fir- very first photo was the 2015 breads with the 30 the 31s because you know how like they dropped very soon i think the 31 the 31 breads came out first and then i think the the 2015 uh the the og breads came out like a week or two after that and that was my very first post i was just like Oh, 31, 31 and the one. Um, and so it started off like that. And then I went on a, I went on a trip um, with my wife to Japan one time and we were on uh, like their sneaker street and I took a photo of like what was on shelf. And I think that was my first post that had over like a hundred likes. Cause before that, like, I think that first post that, that one where I talked about the breads, I had like three likes. Like some of the business myself, <laughs> and it was like, yeah, it was like, no, like nothing. And it wasn't even about. I mean, it's it's it wasn't even about that, you know. Yeah, like at yeah, that yeah. time, it's like I don't care. Um, but I think that first post that got like a hundred, uh, a hundred <laughs> likes. I was like, I looked at my wife, and she's like, "Oh my god, you got a hundred likes!" I was like, "Oh, that's crazy." Um, yeah, and so it it it's kind of like it's still mostly about just you know sharing my my thoughts on sneakers not that you know anyone cares about my thoughts on sneakers but i i just like to showcase what i have um i'm not working with any brands or anything so i don't have like i'm not seeded anything um anything that i get i get from friends that work at the the company so it's like i i don't i don't have any stake in the game right so it's like I I just kind of give my opinions on certain stuff. Like I know I got very unpopular feedback or opinions on my take on the union force because I was like I just don't like any of them. And then people are like, oh, you're crazy, man! That's like you're out of your mind. Um, but I think people have really enjoyed or either enjoyed or get frustrated by the shanghai sneaker walls right like when i post like stuff that's like sitting at a nike store or jordan store like the comments are blowing up there it's just like i can't believe it oh man people in china must hate shoes um yeah (laughs) chinese people hate jordans or whatever it's uh, um and so it's kind of like just you know sometimes it's that sometimes it's what i see and and obviously i haven't been able to travel this year but previously you know we'll do trips to hong kong japan taipei and i think people are just generally interested in what's popular and what's sitting and what's hot out in asia and to add to what you said so like i think those images of um the sneaker walls in china for us people in north america a lot of the times it's kind of mind-blowing because a lot of stuff that's sitting there would be sold out within the hour of our stores opening so obviously there's a huge difference in some respects between the Asian market and North American market. And can you talk about like some of those differences? Are there certain shoes people in Asia and China gravitate to that we don't? Yeah. Um, I think, well, first of all, let's talk about what's popular. Dunks are very popular just like in the States right now, but I actually see more women buying dunks out here. It's become a super, Hmm. I don't know how to say this. I'm not trying to offend anyone, but it's become a, like, a lot of female influencers are wearing dunks, dunks with their outfit, like, like big hoodie with, like, looks like they're not wearing pants with dunks, right? Like, that's like the look, like, they're, like, they're just trying to show off their makeup while wearing dunks. They're trying to, so it's a lot of like the TikTok, well, it's not TikTok, it's, it's doing here but it's the the same platform where it's just like they're always in dunks so a lot of i would say even a lot of the resellers are buying dunks for like their girlfriends or wives or whatever so it's like it's weird dunks are super popular among female influencers in asia right now um they fly like the the small sizes like way more expensive than men's sizes yeah like size seven like size six to like size eight women's is like like way high really expensive um 
what else is doing well right now. Uh, I would say Nike and Jordan is not doing well. Right wow. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, they're, they are not doing well right now. Um, you know, collabs and like limited stuff, that's, that's always going to fly, right? Like those, you're not going to see a, a fragment Travis collab on, on, on my feed on the <laughs> yeah. sneaker wall. Like you're not going to see that. Um, but everything that came out, Electro Orange, Purple Metallics, um, those uh, kind of like Oregon sixes. Um, like if you just look at some of my, those, those fuchsia ones, patinas, neutral gray lows, those all sat, those all sat here. Um, they're still available. I, if I walk down to the Jordan store, um, my main Jordan store, like five minutes from here, it's all sit, it's all off shelf, uh, full size run. And I think the reason for that, I mentioned it on some other podcasts, but there's been uh, some big Nike Jordan backlash just from uh, labor agreements and, you know, some of the big brands just mentioning China's like labor laws and, and China was very upset about it. And for a while they shut down their factories. They shut down like all the big factories for like two weeks. So previously when there were, uh, there were major delays because of that. So shoes that were supposed to drop in the States were pushed back like months. Um, and this was maybe back in like March, April time. Um, and then I don't think the general public has recovered from that yet because uh, if you don't know, like China, China specifically, I wouldn't say Asia, but China is very like country pride-ish. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah and so a lot of the people were pissed. Like they were going on social media saying like, don't buy Nike products, don't buy Jordan products. Um, and to be honest with you, I don't think it's fully recovered from that. So when you say people were saying don't buy Nike products, these are like influencers, athletes, celebrities. Yep. Um, so Nike lost like 50 of their top influencers. Wow. In, in, in a span Jeez. of two weeks. Uh, in a span of two weeks, they told me that uh, foot traffic in the main flagship store, which is like huge, it's like five stories. Um, they lost like like thirty percent of foot traffic. No one was buying anything. Um, things have recovered a little bit, but I, I think that there's still some like feelings about like why would I'm not going to support these brands that are talking bad about like, my country, right? So, was it I just Nike or other other brands too? Oh yeah, there was a, a, a lot of clothing brands. Like H and M got completely black blackballed. Um, they like shut down. They actually like shut down and closed like half their stores in China. Wow. Yeah. So there's some there's some stuff that's like some effects of that backlash that happened a couple months ago. But you didn't you didn't really read about it because um, I posted this on my story maybe like a month ago. You might have missed it, but it was like Nike, the Nike CEO coming out saying like, oh, we, we, you know, we, yeah, we, we love, we love China and we know how important they are. So it was like that, that was their way of like apologizing a little bit. You know what I mean? It was, it was really similar to the whole NBA, um, Mori, the rocket situation in Hong Kong, how he made that tweet. Yeah. Um, and, and you know how he's not with Houston, he's with Philly now. All Philly games are banned in China. Wow. I thought you guys were you okay with Mori now, but apparently not. No, 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 no. Like you, you can't. So NBA is huge here, right? Like you can stream all games. You can even stream them in English. Like you can stream everything except for Philadelphia games because he's there. So like talk about, talk about petty, right? Like it's just like, nope, wherever he goes. So when he was in Houston, no Houston games. When he was in, when, when now that he's with Philly, no Philly games. So during like a good chunk of the playoff run, you guys just couldn't watch. <laughs> and we just couldn't watch Philly games. You could stream it from like a U.S. site, but you couldn't stream it from China's like NBA website. That's crazy. Yeah. So I think I think that there are still some ill effects from that whole backlash. And to be honest with you, a lot of people just moved to other brands like Leaning. Leaning has really blown up. Uh, talking about some brands um, earlier when you were asking like what's doing well. Um, Leaning's doing really well. They have kind of like a street wear division and, and stuff like some of their stuff looks pretty cool, but it's so, it's like, it's a little too in your face, China, like their brand now is 
as almost like they've kind of like almost rebranded to China Lining. If you if you translate it in Chinese, like in Chinese it says Zhongguo Lining, which is like China Lining, right? Like that's pretty. So they're just pretty embracing like, embracing their whole Chinese, yeah. you know. Totally, totally. It's like super in your face, right? It's like kind of smart to be honest. <laughs> yeah. So so Lining's doing really well, and a lot of the the smaller companies have kind of like taken taken their Nike's chunk or you know Converse's chunk, Adidas's chunk, and they've been really blowing up. It just shows you how much politics has to play in in everything, huh? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, and like how much money's involved. Like the whole NBA thing. Like even LeBron, he was like, "Oh, I can't speak on this." Yeah, well, like for obvious reasons. Yeah, like it. yeah, like silver, silver. Like it was like, "Oh, yeah, I'm not gonna speak on this." And like normally, the most normally the most like outspoken Kerr Popovich, they were like. Yeah, we're not going to talk about this because it's there's too much money involved. It's too it's too risky. You mm. know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could. Uh, it's kind of like how do you see it, right? Like if you're on the oh, like money shouldn't affect like your personal values, like how that's so messed up. But it's like when you're talking about, I mean, the, realistically, let let's say like Nike just really doubled down and was like, no, whatever, this is not okay. We will not support this there's a good chance that you will not see nike products in china which i would say is like their second biggest market in the world mm -hmm. no i wouldn't be surprised at all you know the pride is strong <laughs> yeah 100 percent, totally so moving on so obviously sneakers and basketball they go hand in hand and i saw earlier this year you had a chance to work with converse and you surprised some of your um, the kids that you work with with new ball shoes, right? Yeah. Um, so my buddy works at Converse. He's their um, he, he's their head at uh, Converse Basketball over there, and um, I've known him before he was at Converse. And he he reached out to me and said, "Hey, you know, I know you're coaching." And this was not last year, but the year before, so two years ago. He reached out and said, "You know, I know you're coaching the high school basketball team." Uh, would you be interested in like team kicks? And I was like, let's go. Like, cause I mean, I don't know if you played high school sports or everything, but like if, if it was always fun when you're like fitted with the whole team, right? Like, mm -hmm. cause we're all wearing the same shoes. We got the same gear on. Like, it's just, you feel, you feel that team chemistry thing going on. And um, two years ago we did, that's when Converse Battle, basketball was kind of like coming back it's like the same time when puma basketball did those clyde's um i got them the the grinch the coat the, the converse grinch colorway um which looks like the kobe grinches um and you know they were super pumped about that i dressed up as the grinch we did like a shooting competition um so that so that was really fun and then last year obviously with covid things were a little bit uh messy in terms of our season so we didn't get to have like our final tournament or final game, but uh, it was even better last year because Converse hooked us, hooked us up with two pairs. So they each got a pair of low top Evo BBs, which is like their second generation. And then they uh, got a pair of all white Chuck 70s. And so, yeah, like the kids were super excited about it. Um, you know, I tell them that it's not like a given that this is going to happen because it's just like, by luck that I have a connection at Converse, but um, it's just a way of doing team bonding and and like chemistry building and just letting the kids know like, hey, it, you know, it means something to be a part of a team. And um, yeah, it's 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 exciting. It's exciting for the kids that aren't super like sneakerheads. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like, I, I think I think me and you both understand. Or it's like when you have like. Kobe eights that you rather wear or like the new Kyrie's or the new KD's that you could wear and you get a pair of Converse, you might be like, Oh, these aren't like my go-to basketball shoe. Um, but then when they are wearing it because they want to be a part of the team, that's awesome. But then when you have like your other guys that aren't that who are good at basketball, they made the team, but they're just not into basketball shoes. When they get a free pair of shoes, they're like, they like lit up like it was Christmas. So like that, like that's a cool that's a cool feeling and and it's awesome that the team can like 
you know, rally behind that and, and, and feel like they're a part of something. So how long have you been actually coaching basketball? Uh, I coached, uh, I've coached girls varsity basketball for six years. And now this is my fifth year coaching boys varsity basketball. And all this time it's been in China or you've done, you've had experience in the States too. Uh, I mean, I coached a little bit in the States, but it's, it's hard because not, not at the high school level, you know, it's just like coaching middle school or like, you know, giving up your weekend to like do a rec league refing and stuff like that. But like officially coaching, coaching where like head coach style, assistant coach stuff. Um, yeah. Just in China. It's fun, man. Like I get a kick out of it and everyone's like, Oh, would you rather coach girls or boys? Like it's totally different. Girls are so much easier to coach, but like they, they, they just listen better. They want to do it. Like they, they, they're trying really hard to do everything that you want them to do. Mm-hmm. And then boys just like, sometimes they just have that attitude. Like, yeah, whatever coach. Like <laughs> it's, yeah, it drives me nuts, man. It makes me so angry sometimes. How hard was that transition from, you know, being a player, you're used to this your whole life and then trying to translate those uh, skills so, and knowledge. So onto hard, the- so hard. Like I still get super pumped up when the, when the kids are like warming up and I have like the music blasting in the gym and stuff like that. Like I still get chills. Um, and, and, you know, there are times where I'm like, oh, oh like, come on. Like, I could have made that play. I'm 38. What are you guys doing out there? Yo, player coach, man. Suit up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Uh, sometimes I wish I could, man. Sometimes I wish I could. Um, it's hard. It's hard because I still play now. I still try to play, you know, two times. I try to play like two times a week. Uh, it's hard with a little one at home. Um, but, uh, yeah, basketball is just all all the time man i'm i'm watching it whenever i can i watched the finals you know i didn't have any teams in it this year but i was just like super excited it was so it was i i thought it was an amazing finals Giannis balled out man that was that was a good finals it was refreshing not to have like a stacked super team versus another stacked super team so it was it no was complaints. i enjoyed it so obviously your father um your husband how into shoes are the rest of your family <laughs> are they crazy about it like you or not quite uh my wife hates sneakers no like, i think no i think she, i think she hates it because of me though like i i don't think she she absolutely can't she's just like oh my god i can't do this anymore you like our whole closet is just shoes and shoes and shoes and it's I, I, and I, it's so funny because every time we go to like a sneaker store, like a, like a Nike or whatever, and she'll like pick out, she'll be like, these are cute. I'm like, you like them? Uh, uh what size? Like, <laughs> let, let's get you into sneakers more. Yeah. <laughs> and it could be like some like expensive, like Stella McCartney boost. I'm like, it doesn't matter. It's okay. Just try them on and see if you like, them. um, but yeah, she's not, she's not too into kicks. Um, she's more about comfort. Like she has some flyknit trainers she has some boost um i bought her a pair of i just bought her a pair of those orange pearl dunks so the baby has the toddler one i have the men's one she has the she has the uh you know women's one and that's my way of getting her into shoes i see what you're doing it's because (laughs) and it's because i'll be like oh we could all match like (laughs) the baby has one too and so so recently I bought her two pairs. I bought my wife two pairs. I bought her the waffle ones because uh, I have them and the baby has them. And so I'm like, see, this is, we can all do this together. And she's like, okay, fine, fine. I'll do it. But she'll never wear them. She just like sticks to like, she just loves like kids type shoes, right? Just all white, like canvas or leather. I don't know if you've heard of this brand. I don't think they sell, uh, I know that they sell them in the States, but it's very rare. Fei Yue. Um, no, don't think so. Um, it was funny because someone on the Bucks team was wearing them for, for like game two or something. And then it was like posted in Chinese social media. Like, look, people in the States are wearing these. Um, it's like a very like basic canvas shoe. It almost looks like a, a Vans, um, but it's like a, a, a Chinese, it's a Chinese brand though. Um, and and they're doing, they're doing pretty well, but you know, their shoes are like 
15 to 20 bucks. Like they're super cheap, but uh, she wears those a lot. Um, she, my daughter has about six pairs of Jordan ones. Uh, like the little Velcro ones, the toddler ones. Uh, she has those dunks. She has a pair of NMDs and, and she has a pair of 350s. So like her collection's getting up there. She probably has like 10 pairs. Um, she, she, she's starting to like it. She's only a year and a half. So she, she doesn't even know how to put on her own shoes right now, but she's definitely like going into the closet and like, she'll like look at it and she'll like try to put it on, but she doesn't know how to. That's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it's super cute. Like she, she definitely has a lot. Um, my wife is like, stop buying her shoes. Her feet grow so fast. Like she has, I, before she was born, I bought like those Jordan one crib booties. Oh man, those are so cute. They look like the, the they look like Jordan ones. But I bought like all six, six or seven of the colorways. Now she can't, but now she can't wear them anymore. <laughs> yeah. They're like this small, right? Like she can't even wear them anymore. And my wife's like, now look, now look. And I'm like, no, they're keychains now. I'll just turn them into keychains. Like it's not a big deal. It'll be okay. I have this thing where I buy um, a lot of two C's or three C's versions of shoes just because they're hilarious because they're tiny versions of men's shoes right so i have like probably 10 or 12 pairs just stacked in my closet for no reason like i don't even have a kid so i don't even know why i buy them but <laughs> <laughs> they're just so freaking cute yeah like you just yeah. see them and you're like and 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 they're just so freaking cute one last thing i wanted to touch on uh before before i go is you mentioned like the trends in in china um I just don't think people are flipping shoes as much anymore here, which is crazy because right now that's like all the craze, right? Like you got high schoolers flipping shoes, like just trying to make quick money. You know, you can, I know we all hate resellers and stuff like that, but it's like, they're just trying to make money. Right. And um, I think people in China, I don't want to say like got grown past flipping shoes, but they're flipping other things now. It's like they're flipping, they're flipping a lot of like streetwear stuff, like stuff that goes for like more money, you know, like it's, I, 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 almost, I, I would kind of want to say that like shoes isn't making enough money for them. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but it's like they're flipping watches, they're flipping bags, they're flipping like more higher end stuff now. And, and it's kind of like evolved a little bit from sneakers. So the same things that were happening with sneakers before, like people camping out, um, you know, people trying to buy multiples of the same thing. Is that, are you seeing that with watches and bags and things like that? Or is it a different sort of way that they're doing it? You'll see it more with like streetwear clothing. Like, like a lot of people are like flipping clothing, like flipping like Fear God stuff, flipping like, you know, uh, Kanye clothes or stuff like that. It's, I think shoes is like the, the limited quantity of stuff for them is like it's not enough like profit it's almost mm -hmm. like they're going bigger you know like if they're gonna flip like one of something then they're gonna flip a bag instead of a pair of shoes right because for a bag they can make like thousands whereas for a pair of shoes it's like for them making like 60 bucks over retail 80 bucks over retail yeah it's like it doesn't like do enough for them there's also like a bigger gap between the middle class here high school students in the States can buy two pairs of shoe, shoes that they can flip on eBay and make 50 bucks profit for each pair. Whereas here, high school student is not going to spend 180 bucks on a pair of shoes. Like there's no way, like they just don't have that kind of cash like readily available. And so like the bigger resellers here are selling like, major quantity. I'm talking like 50 people in line are working for the same reseller. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a whole, it's like reselling out here. It's a whole different kind of monster. Like you got people who own factories, have their factory employees all on the sneaker side. Like you don't need bots when you literally have like 150 people logging into sneakers for you, you know? So it's, it's like a, it's like a different type of flex here. It's kind of, it's kind of crazy. I feel like a lot of trends in Asia kind of trickle down in North America eventually. So We'll see if people move on from sneakers here, but I don't know. I have my doubts. <laughs> are you like, I mean, outside of sneakers, like, are you, are you doing the whole hat thing? Are you doing the whole cards thing? Like, I, I know that right now in the States, like that's huge right now. Like card opening. And no, man. Like my, like my personality is, um, 
once I get into something, I get like hooked bad. So I don't even want to start with cards or anything else because I know once I start, it's going to be another avenue that I'm wasting money on. So let's not go there. <laughs> I know. I, I'm, I hear you 100%. I got that same kind of like, I think all sneaker got like sneakerheads are like kind of have that addictive personality, right? Like yeah. you, you want to get it, you want to have it. And then the whole cards thing. Like, I'm so glad that that's not out here. Like hats aren't big here. Cards aren't big here. It's it's just like really shoes and like it's high end really. It's like really gone crazy with like within watches, within cars. Like it's it's gone above sneakers already. Crazy. It's amazing, man. Well, thank you for your insights about uh China and all that stuff. Super, super interesting to see like the differences. For all our listeners, if they want to know where they can find you, what's your social handles and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, Instagram, Shanghai Soul, Shanghai like the city, Soul like the bottom of your foot. Um, don't ask me to be the plug because I'll probably <laughs> delete. D- delete. <laughs> you know, but you know, the biggest thing is that it's not that I'm trying to be a jerk. Um, like, because I, I want to help people get shoes, right? Like, I see, I see what's happening in the States. It sounds like it's so hard to just go into a store and see stuff that you like. Like, that just sounds miserable. It doesn't sound Terrible. like fun at all. Yeah. Um, but the biggest reason why I don't send shoes is because it's so expensive to ship. They purposely do it so that they keep like the money in China, really. Like they want to keep product here. They want to keep the money here. Um, it, it costs, if I were to ship, like, let's just use the electro orange. If I were to ship that pair of shoes, size 10, 10 and a half, let's say to you, uh, it would cost me like $120. US? Yeah. Holy crap. It's like, it, it, it ranges anywhere from 90 to 120. Wow. Like, and, and so it's not cheap. And so people are like, oh, could you send, like, I'll, I'll throw a little extra your way. I'll, you know, send you money for the shoes. And I'm like, you're really better off on StockX. You'll get it there faster and you'll pay like almost exactly the same. So why get it from china right like it I, I i understand it like people see it and they're like oh my god it's available like i just want to get it for retail sure i can pick it up for retail but the shipping itself is going to like be what you're going to pay resale for so you might as well just pay resale that's what i tell everyone like it's not like i'm just being like no don't message me i'm not going to help you but there's really no point you're almost paying resale prices so yeah and so like for a pair imagine like a like a size 12 and like a lebron right it's like a tank like when they go by weight, man, that's like 150 bucks, dude. It's ridiculous. It's like, it's so not worth it. So now you guys know Jay's not trying to be a dick. He's just being <laughs> practical and trying to save you money. <laughs> I'm trying to save you money. I'm trying to save you money. Anyways, so thank you so much, man. Um, like again, great having you on. It was great finally having this face to face. Yeah, man, I, I, I got to appreciate, uh, I, I just want to say thanks for having me on, Sean. Um, I super appreciate your channel. Um, I've been following you for a minute, you know, I'll message you on YouTube. I'll message you on Instagram. I'll be like, yo, Sean, I want those shoes. Tell me, you got to tell me true to size, fit big, fit small. Because every time you're like, I'm a, I'm a true size 10, yeah, you slightly know, on you the know. wider side. I- <laughs> Uh, and so I'm like, yes, yes, that's exactly what I needed to know. <laughs> so I appreciate your channel. Um, and, and I always appreciate like the non biased, like honest reviews. Always, yo, always. It's just to the point. It's to the point. Like it's, it's super informational. Like I, I always get a lot of, you know, like good stuff from your channel. So, you know, thanks for providing that content for all of us. Respect, man. So speaking about my YouTube, if you guys want to check out my videos, you can find me at youtube.com slash Sean Go. I'm on Instagram as well at sgo8 and on Twitter at sean.go spelt out. So thank you everyone for listening. This has been episode 22 of the Channel 8 podcast. And until next time, we'll catch you guys in the next episode.